Hello. So first of all, I am beyond honored to be here. I'm so inspired by all the other speakers I've heard so far and just like intellectually stimulated and just it's all been so powerful. So thank you so much. I feel just so great to be here. So um, I'd like for you to imagine a middle-aged man that I once knew. He was into drinking whiskey, barroom debates, uh, hiking in state parks. Um, he, uh, his usual uniform was flannel and cargo pants, and uh, he, uh, he had a very large beard. He had long hair, and he once told me that he couldn't wait to grow into an old man because he wanted to play Santa Claus at the mall during Christmas. Now, I would like for you to imagine this same person 18 months later. Did you imagine someone 30 pounds lighter with a shaved face, shaved legs, shaved arms, wearing a wrap dress and high heel boots, crying over being misgendered for the third time in three days? Unless you know something about me, probably not. <laughs> but that man was my uh, husband at the time. His name is Jamie. And that woman is who he became. So um, a quick disclosure. Um, I don't use feminine pronouns for my ex-husband because I don't think he's a woman and I don't like cognitive dissonance. But I do support everyone's right to use whatever language they feel good about and whatever works for them. And then I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about myself. So like so many other speakers who spoke before me, I, am, I consider myself a liberal. Um, I have had uh, a, a, a very liberal past. I have dated women. I've experimented with polyamory. I've uh, worked at drag shows. When I was in my 20s, I worked for an LGBTQ newspaper in a volunteer capacity. Um, I was very excited to hear Jamie Reed's speech because I could really identify with a lot of it. I had those friends, those anarchist friends, and those gender bender and poets and uh, free thinkers and all that kind of stuff. So um, that was very that was very familiar to me. Um, so um, when my ex-husband Jamie uh, began cross-dressing, I initially supported it because I didn't care. Um, it didn't bother me. I uh, didn't think that it would harm our 14-year relationship. Um, so when he began to cross-dress, it was actually precipitated by a night of porn use. Um, so at first this was okay with me, but after a few months of cross-dressing, my husband became unrecognizable. He started to become obsessed with image, um, very easily offended. Uh, he became depressed, suicidal. Um, he, he cried all the time. He took on some really strange beliefs, like he started to say that he was a literal woman and that he had a female brain, and that he thought that he had some sort of biological disorder that was actually making him female. He stopped working. After a while, he stopped participating in all his hobbies. He went online a lot. He spent all his time educating friends, strangers, family on transgender rights. And um, it, it affected our intimate life, of course. Our communication, which was once really easy and free, became fraught. Uh, it was very difficult to talk about things. And our sex life, which was once quite vibrant, also withered and, and suffered. And one thing that I didn't really understand was um, why it was necessary to lie in order to support Jamie, because I was okay with him dressing as he wanted. Um, what I didn't like was that it seemed to be necessary for me to call him a literal woman. It seemed to be necessary for me to say that we were in a lesbian relationship. And more and more, my life was turning into a charade, and I was not okay with that. And for my own integrity and for my own um, just to live authentically myself, I could not, um, I couldn't continue to do that, and I had to leave the marriage. Now, I'm an adult, and Jamie's an adult, and we don't have kids, and relationships end all the time. 
for all kinds of reasons. And I've built my life on stronger foundations, and I'm fine. Um, in fact, I've written a memoir about my experience, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. But um, when I was asked to speak here today, I wanted to make sure that I had a really good uh, reason to be here, and, and I really had something to offer. And I wanted to make it clear that my story is important, not because I'm some kind of victim who needs your sympathy, but because I have a perspective uh, that will allow me to shed some light, I think, on the phenomenon that we're all seeing, which of course is uh, an unprecedented rise in the number of people identifying as transgender and especially children. Um, so I just wanted to do my part to, to speak to that. So I watched a grown man who at one point in, in time what seemed very stable, intelligent, um, uh, happy, uh, content. I watched this man utterly upend his life over gender, lost his, his marriage, uh, part of his family of origin, his job, his hobbies. Uh, I watched him, his, his personality change at a very, very rapid pace. And if that's what happened to a grown man, then I can't imagine that children can be trusted to process gender confusion in a more mature way. Now, <laughs> I'm not an endocrinologist or a doctor or uh, anything like that, so I'm, I'm not here to give you facts and figures. There are plenty of other speakers who have done a fantastic job of that. Um, but what I do want to do is just um, give a little insight into things that I saw behind closed doors that aren't getting talked about and that, in fact, are being suppressed and that my ex-husband, for one, is certainly lying about, but uh, that I also know, you know, the media is putting a spin on and, and all that kind of stuff. So of interest uh, to the situation with children in particular, I can tell you that Jamie's trajectory really started with social media and that social media had a huge influence on it. Um, he, he also was into watching pornography. Um, there was also peer group influence, so he had joined some transgender groups and some online groups, and um, this is where I started to see where at first he was saying, um, I'm just expressing myself, I'm expressing my feminine side. Then he began to come up with these ideological things from, from his peer groups. Um, here's another thing of interest, which I know also kind of applies sometimes with this situation with children. Um, Jamie's therapist, uh, immediately affirmed him upon knowing him for five minutes. Her exact words were that it would be fun to transition him. And the reason why I know that is because I was there. Jamie's therapist was our marriage counselor until she decided that Jamie was her primary client and I was a conflict of interest. So, <laughs> let's see. Um, Another thing that's important is that mental illness ran in Jamie's family. And I watched Jamie have what looked very, very much to me like delusions of grandeur and delusions of persecution. And at least once I saw Jamie um, say that he had heard a man compliment him and then insult him, uh, and I was present, and neither of those things had happened. So I'm not sure if he was hearing voices or just uh, misinterpreting something he heard, but there was definitely some, some mental illness uh, aspects to this. Another thing, we're told that gender dysphoria is something different from body dysmorphia, but in my experience, I did not see the difference. Jamie had, uh, Jamie's dysphoria manifested as a dislike of his masculine features, so his beard, his face, his broad shoulders, um, his voice, his square jaw. Um, it looked like body dysmorphia to me. Now, I've met, another, uh, I've met other trans widows, uh, quite a few. Um, some while I was still married, many have come to me since, and they say that they see the same patterns over and over again. They see porn use, social media addiction, uh, personality changes, depression, sexual dysfunction. All the, all the same things over and over again. So 
So I really want children to have the opportunity to uh, grow into healthy adults with all their opportunities intact. I want them to be socially connected. I want gender diverse people to, to feel comfortable and to accept themselves. And because I think that my goals are the same as yours, I do hope that you will check out my book. This is what it looks like right now. That's going to change. Um, but um, I think what I think um, is important is that I think that I can further the cultural conversation if I help people understand that my ex-husband currently works as a lobbyist for transgender interests. He also works as an advisor to LGBTQ youth groups. And so this person who's an adult male whose transition was sexually motivated is leading the conversation on the care that children receive, even though he has little or nothing in common with that cohort, especially the young girls. Now, I, uh, I was thinking about this, and I, we've heard from so many great people today. You know, we've heard from biologists and uh, people who've been psychologists and have worked in the field. You know, Stephen Levine, I think uh, his first uh, transsexual patient was in the 70s. Heather and Colin, you know, uh, biology experts, Carol, uh, Christina with the, with the autism research. Um, and just, just so much really good information but that's not the information that's being used to set these policies. What's being used is my ex-husband, who has things to say that, um, that is popular in activist circles, but even though he has just no credentials for that, and, and wasn't even really in LGB circles um, at all. So he's like new, you know, he's a straight male, he's new to the whole thing, but he's leading that conversation. So I do, um, I have a plan to release an anniversary edition of my book late next, uh, late next year. Um, so I am looking for some help promoting that because I had a little trouble getting press, as you might imagine. Um, in the interim, though, I have gotten a ton of Amazon reviews that are really, really good and thoughtful. I've gotten praise from several people in this room, so thank you for that. Uh, ben Appel and <laughs> Stella. Um, Helen Joyce said it was brilliant. I got a great uh, comment from Jonathan Kay at Quillette. So um, if you are a journalist or an influencer or in any way can help me with that, I would love for you to come and see me. I do have free books to give away. So um, in my opinion, transition was not an appropriate treatment for my ex-husband. It did not seem to make him happy. And I can't imagine that it's going to be any better for younger people who, who know themselves even less. And uh, as, as some of our speakers have mentioned, of course, the European countries have, uh, you know, dialed, dialed back some of their um, aggressive interventions in this, uh, in the treatment. And, the media, of course, the tide is changing a little bit. Things are changing. So I do believe that we're on a frontier of change, but it takes all of us telling the truth and standing up and talking about what we're seeing in our homes and in our schools and in our medical practices. Um, and my story, I think, is a part of that work. All of your stories are a part of that work, too. Uh, we just have to have the bravery to stand up and say something, however uncomfortable the social consequences might be. That's it. Thank you.